Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Eddie Marcus here again, as always, for you. I'm here because as spokesman and advocate of basic human rights for all people, my mission is here on this planet to advocate for heaven right here. I don't advocate for going to heaven. You know, some people talk about saving your souls. I have no part of that. I'm not trying to save anybody's soul. My mission is to expose all of the evilness that I run into every day, and I'm aware that you run into every day. Expose it for what it is. But not just that. Give you an impression. Give you a revelation. Give you an understanding of what it can be like. Many of you have heard, especially in America, where you advocate for Christianity, that uh, one of the last prayers, or maybe not a last prayer, but one of the endings of a prayer that Jesus made was that thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For some strange reason, that meant something to me. Jesus was held up as this monumental figure, the son of the almighty God. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Now, I know today most people don't, even though they still say they practice Christianity, don't believe in Jesus. But see, this is what we've always done. We focused on the messenger and not the message. Even if Jesus never existed, that message is heavenly. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What, why would that be so fantastic? It's because you'll have your desires, your dreams, and your wants come true. That's what heaven is all about. And is that possible? Of course it is. There are certain things that you must do in order to do it. We as people know it. I was mentioning the other day one of the greatest signs that we know how important it is that certain basic principles be practiced, we use it in the computer. The computer works because everything is in order. Take something out of order, the computer does not work at all. Society will work perfectly, heavenly, if you follow those same basic principles that would allow it to happen. And if you mess with it, it won't work. And what we have on this earth as a failure of these things to work because we do not, I mean, we really do not practice those principles. What I want to say on this Sunday morning to you, ladies and gentlemen, is this. As spokesman and advocate of basic human rights, basic human rights, let me give you an example of what I'm saying. Uh, a few months ago, oh, well, maybe let's put it this way. About a year ago, uh, my daughter spent a sum of money to get her car repaired. She got it repaired and uh, the work was supposed to be warranted. It is. And then in relationship to, well, let me just put it this way. She got a car fixed and required an alternator. Later on, she needed an oil change. So she went and got an oil change. No, when you buy a new car, your alternator is expected to work at least five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. So when you got a problem, you go and spend the kind of money that they charge you for. You expect that to last at least four, five, six years. However, you don't really know what they're doing. You don't know whether they're giving you a new alternator, whether they're trying to rebuild the one that you uh, had, or just you never know what's going on. But you do expect to get a certain amount of service from it. So after a month, after a year, it, the alternator is not working. So you take it back to see what the problem is. It's under warranty. What are you going to do? And when they evaluate the situation, they tell you that the problem had was caused by the oil chain. That's the other job she had done. And so now they refuse to fix it. Not only that, later they come back and say, the warranty is off. You've paid this amount of money, but now your warranty only lasts, what? 24,000, 24,000 miles or two years. So if your two years now haven't expired, then twenty, then 24,000 miles. And so there you are. But then they also said the problem with the oil company, you take it to the oil company, the oil company say it's not their problem. So here she is, just like anybody who don't have the resources to go get a legal voice to make some more money of you, to argue a case for you. And so there she is. Is there an illegitimacy that would fix this problem for her? Nah. 
if she wants this thing to resolve, she got to go get some money and either pay somebody else to argue it for it or go get some money and repair the car. Now, I say that because people who do not have access, people who do not have resources go through this kind of stuff every day. I'm talking to you because you go through it every day. I know you go through it every day. And you are mad and you wish somebody would do something for you. And yet, you seem not to have any resource or recourse. And so you have to just sit there and take it. You just have to sit there and take it. Well, what the basic human rights for all people would entail, for me to share this information with you and share with you a situation where it will never, ever occur like this. And hopefully you would choose to say, well, whatever that situation is that will protect me from all those crazy stuff that's going on, I accept. And you usually will unless you've been trained not to accept. If, unless you've been trained to be like that. Now, that's just a expression to lead me to this higher, more obvious situation that we all as individuals of this nation and of all nations have to deal with every day. Here today, we as American citizens, as Life has shown us that we as people of color are treated like second-class citizens. That means that there are other people in this society that is treated above us, more respectful, more, and, and it's, it's, a, it's a system that's designed to do that. It happens every day. Why? Because this isn't heavenly. Now, we, we go along with it because we've been living it all our lives, and we just think it's okay. And yet you got people who are telling you about saving your soul and going to heaven, who allow all of these things to happen to the people. In many cases, they play a major role in causing it to happen or giving it power to happen. And so you just seem to be so confused. When I write these posts, there's one person, I don't know who it is, the one decided to uh, uh, subscribe to me just so every time I make a post, they can write back and curse me out. Well, that's okay. At least I know somebody's reading it <laughs> or hearing it. Yes. But what I want to show to you, ladies and gentlemen, is this. Let me show you and share with you the bigger picture. The bigger picture is this. It's this nation. I want to tell you, I want to tell you blank slate, clean sheet of paper, Nothing on it, put some on it. Here we go. This nation, like all nations of the earth, are corrupt. It's corrupt. All of the nations are corrupt. None of them are concerned about doing anything on earth as it is in heaven. And they made sure that they maintain this basic practice by introducing another practice that we have been dealing with ever since we've been on this planet. Well, that one way or another. We as black people living in America, for some strange reason, we were informed about the, how the system worked. Over the past several years, we have seen black people murdered. <clears throat> murdered, killed by the law. Killed by the law. Policemen killing them. And you were blessed enough to see in Minneapolis, Minnesota, George Floyd murdered by a policeman, Chauvin or something like that, I believe his name, with a knee on the man's neck, with the cameras viewing him right there doing the stuff, people screaming, get off him, get off him. He's saying he can't breathe. And this guy in his pocket looking up like, can you believe this? And murdered that man right before our very eyes. And so what they say, well, we'll put this one in jail. We put this one in jail, but what about all the ones that were murdered before then? And in fact, when this guy was being judged for the crime that he committed, they were still killing black people <laughs> with no guns, just killing them. I mean, what more does it take to, for you to see that we're living in hell and hell is not going to change itself? Now, that's just part of it. Here we got before our very eyes a young man come along named Donald J. Trump. I think that's his name. And he advocates all of the ugliness 
that people can experience in a lifetime. He's lying, a cheater. Well, no, wait a minute now. I'm not just saying Donald Trump do this. At one point in time, maybe all of us dip and dab and lying and stuff like that, ugly stuff. But for the most part, this is his way of life, to divide and conquer. And he came on the scene talking about the people who white people, the one they call supreme, have been taught to hate, who have been taught to blame all of their problems on the other people. And even though in America you tried to have a democracy that would allow you to have some sense of, of, of uh, civility, yet we can still see it's lacking a lot. But here comes someone who people have held the white, represent white supremacy. Yeah, I guess that's blonde hair. I don't know. I think his eyes might be blue. I'm not sure. But he's sitting there representing them saying, I got money. I'm somebody. And I can, and I alone can save you. <laughs> this is the devil. As far as I'm concerned, what he advocates is like, I say I'm advocating for heaven. He's advocating for hell and tell the people, I can save you. Now the people says, come on. And some of the people, because the truth of the matter is, Republicans and Democrats are both serving Satan. But one is going as a fast train. The other one is a slow train. Now, each one calls the other the fast train. But you might know, you might, I don't know, who the fast train is. And so when the people say, bring him on, the people who are on the slow train say, this guy's taking us to hell too fast. We got to get him out of here. And so the House of Representatives, they, they have an impeachment process. And uh, they impeach him, say, wait, man, you're going too fast. We don't want you. And so they try to get rid of him, but they send him to the other arm of the court, other, other arm of the democratic system, the Senate. In the Senate, they're over there filled with these white supremacist guys. They're over there filled with these people who've been trained to know that black people are the problem and they are messing up our lives. So they say, no, we're not sending this guy anywhere. Get on back over there and go to work. Send this, this fox back to the chicken yard. And so they send him on back in there. And he goes right back in there doing what he's doing. And now, out of everything he's done, he's caused an insurrection. He's tried to tear down the country. He's tried to break down every institution that is set up in America to protect white people. Tearing it down. And this morning when I heard him say, those people, they're going to, oh, here he is right now. It's all the evil. Anybody else had done what he is doing, would have been in jail. Barack Obama, one black person you can call a black person, was president of the United States. He had tried that. What this guy has done would have been dead. They'd have just killed him. They wouldn't even argue with him. But this guy's still out there doing what he's doing and telling the American people, those people, he's talking about people of color now, they're going to do this and they're going to do that. And I'm still the one who can say the Democrats. Now he's just not talking about black people and people of color. He's talking about Democrats. These Democrats don't care. And I got to come. And, you know, all of that lying stuff. In America, I'm, I'm watching it. And they're embracing it. They're feeling good. He's going to come back and save it. How in that world can you take a person who has solidified himself with the worst evil that you can imagine and then you want him back as president? He's saying, vote for me in 24, and you want him back. Isn't that something? Isn't that amazing? how people are, and I come along and tell you, hey, you're living in hell. These guys are not trying to fix a problem. The, if the Democrats say this guy's trying to take you to hell on a fast train, the Republicans are saying the Democrats are trying to kick you on the hell on a fast plane. Nobody's trying to fix anything. And you, the people in the middle, just like, what? Like this paper. Just flipping. Any way the, any way the wind blows, you just flipping. You just flipping. You know, what does this say about you? I mean, you might have... Democrat, Republican, whatever your attachment might be, but you're flipping like this. What does that say about you? You say you're lost. And then there's the one that's over there supposed to be talking to you about God. And they're on both sides of the equation. One, some Republicans and some Democrat. And they out there doing this, empowering the world as it is, talking about sending your soul to saving your soul. Now, that's something absolutely pathetic. But this is the world that we're living in, ladies and gentlemen.
But I challenge any of you. I challenge any of you. When I say I'm spokesman for advocate of basic human rights for all people, I have been taught not by the scriptures. I've read them. I have been taught not by somebody preaching to me, even though I've been preached to. But not only that, I was called out to go amongst the people, to study the people as a social scientist, but more or less as one that was willing to listen to the voice of the spiritual God and go out there and learn. Learn that people not necessarily don't want to care about each other, but they're living in a system that would not have permit them to care for one another. Because in the heavenly situation, what you don't know anything about is this. Your basic needs, your wants, and your desires have been prepared for. Like any parent who loves their children would look after them in such a magnificent way. This power that we can't see that is responsible for existence has prepared that for us. Resources that will be needed to do anything that we can imagine that we might want to do is available on this earth, perhaps in the earth, perhaps above the earth. Some of it seen, some of it not seen. And each individual who would, my friends, benefit from anything that can be you got a gift that allows them to participate in the process. You know, when a baby have to uh, be dressed and, and fed, you can't do too much, just go along. But as he get to a certain age, a certain development, he's expected to engage himself, to do something, to be in the process. So when you become an adult or grown or whatever, you are required to engage yourself in this process of life. And in so doing, they want you to be the best you can be. So there are certain things that's designed to help you to do that. Not just by watching your parents, not just by watching what's going on around you, but by having some education, being able to go to school, to learn things that you probably would never have to be exposed to. But if you need it, you got it. Not only that, you got the health care that will protect you from the sicknesses and the diseases and from the snake bites and from the rats and the roaches that might get all in your life. You got all of that taken care of by this power that loves you so much. And my friends, let me tell you, you never have to worry about those things that are essential for survival, like food and clothing. Everybody needs that. But this God is so magnificent, he's prepared that, that none of you will ever have to have to worry about that. You never have to worry about uh, uh, housing. What? You don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. It's, you, you need housing. And then, as I mentioned earlier, the education, the health care, the transportation, the infrastructure that represents the kind of style that you have chosen to exist in. All my friends and all of the stuff that's available to you and stuff that in other nations that are so corrupt, they are run. Their people are picking up their stuff, running, running from this hell, running from these demons to another country trying to say, save us. And these countries now are so bad, they just say, well, can't come here. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you the basic principle of how these things work. In order for you to receive the resources and ex exercise those resources and benefit from those resources. These resources in so doing will offer to you peace. Everybody, they say they want peace, prosperity, freedom, joy, happiness, your dreams, real, not a dream anymore. It's real. And you have to suffer for nothing. It's a stone gas. This happens because you have learned from your family you have learned from God, and now you are a part of life. You engage yourself. You make sure that there's enough for everybody, that the barns won't contain, that the reservoirs overflow, and everybody got their cut without lying, without cheating, without stealing, without killing, without terrorizing, without crime and violence, without poverty, without hatred, without racism, without bigotry, and you choose to hell. You choose hell. Why? Wow, why do you choose hell? Because you don't know anything about heaven. Why don't you know anything about heaven? As far as I know, I'm probably the only one I ever heard somebody telling me about heaven. Everybody's talking about dreaming, going somewhere. I'm not talking about going any place. I'm talking about if you think you're going somewhere, take what you where you're going and pull it down here where you're at. 
This is now. This is when you need heaven. You don't need heaven after you die. You need heaven right now. You are suffering right now. And my message to you is that you can have it right now. But you got to change the way you've been thinking. You've been programmed to accept hell. You've been programmed anything you do. Now, how do you do that? This is the great big trick. As I was saying, the family structure, you've learned from your family. You've got all the stuff that's available to you. Now, the, the system is set up in such a way that you engage yourself. You indulge yourself. You're a participant. Everyone equal. Or everyone is treating every other person as if they're so fantastic. You're treating other people like you are God to them in your gifts. But now the evil one says, well, we're going to cut that out. Since in order for us to be superior, for instance, the white people want to say that, but I don't want to just say there's no white people. I'm saying it because we're in America, but I'm sure in every country, in Africa, they're saying the same thing. In China, they're saying the same thing. In anywhere, everywhere, they're saying the same things. Why? Because there's suffering everywhere. It might not be the same, but there's suffering everywhere. Everywhere people are being abused. So this is what they do. Rather than keep that relationship where you can just be so happy, you got guys come along like Donald Trump is telling the people, they are these people. These people are the problem because he got no solution, got no answer. All he want to do is keep on perpetuating that bull so that they can keep on keeping their feet or their knees on people's neck and killing them while they smile like they're so this and so that. <laughs> yeah, that's where the game is played. And so how do they, how do they, be, how are they able to keep doing this? Rather than have that compassion for one another and recognizing the relationship that you have, the family structure, the same blood, they come up with money. Now, can you think of one thing that you can do in this life, basically, that's systemized, that you can achieve without money? Food, money. Clothing, money. Housing, money. Transportation, money. <laughs> Education, money. Healthcare, money. A whole structure of this hell. Well, I can't get on you so much because like you, we all bought, were born into this stuff. But there's something called the renewing of your mind. Now, I don't know why I speak this stuff to you, except it's me. I didn't make me. Some, some power did. And I'm here, just like you're here. And I see the darkness that you're living in. And I see a light that would bring us out of it. And so my mission here is to expose that darkness, reveal that light, and call you out if you want to. What I've been doing for years is calling you out, and you haven't heard a thing. As I'm, I'm going to mention this because it's important. Ooh, time is passing. 88, I ran for president of the United States. But you have, how in the world can me, Eddie Marcus, black man, broke and ain't even trying to use money? How in the world can he be president? You know, the white people ain't going to even give me a second thought. And your black people been trained to think, oh, he got no money. What can he do? And you didn't give me a second thought. And the church that talks about God, you're still looking for money. Why are you going to give me a second thought? And you know the ones that stand up for God really in the past get killed. And they're black people. Well, some white people got killed too, standing up for God. But anyway, that's the outcome. So my mission here today on the Sunday morning, ladies and gentlemen, is to say to you this. It doesn't matter about you trying to save your soul. You're missing it. You're being led by Satan. You're being led by, because you don't know Satan, evil. All of the ugly things of life, that's what we're being led by. And we're dealing with those challenges every day and we're failing every day. Donald Trump <laughs> wants to be president. I mean, a black person who had a little, a little sense, a little spirit, would be ashamed to stand up in public. And here this joke is, want to be on the world stage, wants to be recognized as the most evil man on the face of, I mean, this man wants to be recognized as the most evil man on the face of the earth, which means that he can do anything he want to do and don't have to worry about nothing. And there are people who right there beside him saying, go for it. Go for it, man. You, when you sit up there and saw those senators lie and those other people just lying, it just made you cringe. 
The same you hear when you hear these people lying, it's like the same thing you saw when they when they attacked the Capitol. You saw them run up to the Capitol. You didn't believe it. You cringe. You say, "Oh, they're not doing it." Yes, they are. And these people up there in front of your face lying when you know. And you say, "Whoa, how can they tell a lie like that?" It's simple. The Supreme Court, they expect you to accept any rules or regulations that they pass about law. When you sit there and see the crookedness, you see how it was staged. You see how Miss Cannon, a judge, sat up there and worked in behalf of this evil person. You see it all around you. And what are you going to do? You say, well, maybe uh, a Mueller will, will save us. And then the generals will save us. Kelly, he'll save us. Now you got a dude named Deary. Maybe he'll save us. Now, when he comes back or failed in doing what you think he's going to do, then what's your next step? Is it war? Come on, my people. Come on. It is time for us to wake up. And it's time for a black man who don't have one penny. Let me see what I have. Well, I might have, I think I had $15 earlier. I still got that. I have to tell you the way to life. And I know you're not going to listen, but it's not my job to make you listen. It's my business to know the truth, speak the truth, and walk according to the truth. Now, when I tell you about these people messing up my daughter, I'm standing up doing the best I can, whatever I got, to expose what's going on. Now, I know you're not going to fix that. They are probably not going to fix it. And if they were, it would be because they would get bad publicity that they don't want to get out. And they might try to fix this little problem right here. But the problem exists all over the country. They're not going to fix that. So how do you fix it? This is how you fix it. If everybody, all of us who live in, who benefit from this, who are at a position in, in our development that we can engage ourselves in that process, you got three, what, how many billion people on earth? Well, let's just go back to 300 some million in America. 300 and some million Americans. Ain't nobody got time to be prostituting. Nobody got time to do drug exploitation. Nobody got time to be out there taking guns, trying to shoot who to kill today or who you're going to get mad with. No, you're too busy living. You're too busy enjoying life. This is what we call heaven. In. This is what I offer you. Instead of what you're hearing from Donald Trump and the Republicans, instead of what you're hearing from the Democrats and, and, and Biden. Hey, yeah, yeah, it's good that you feel like that you're a Democrat. You're not as bad as the Republicans. I know you feel good. But the Republicans think that you are worse than they are. Why? Because they bought a different lie. And lies are lies, and they work to do what lies are intended to do. And the truth, nobody want to hear. Now, you got a chance to make a choice in your life that determines that you can live, and you don't even know it. I'm telling you this. If you listen to me a little bit, that demon will come and blow all of this beautiful hair off my head. And, hey, that, to me, is a job well done. Right now, I've been talking to you for 40 years. i just really been wasting my time because nobody's listening. But that's okay. I'm doing what I was given to do. Now, when I have some effect, when you start saying, well, yeah, it's telling the truth, man. We can change this thing. We can make this a better society to live in. We can make sure our kids got what they need. Our kids can go to college free. Our kids can have homes and stuff. Our kids can. We can. We can. And oh, boy, that's when they're going to blow my brains out. <laughs> so what are you waiting on? Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Have a nice day.